rights of minorities under the international human rights documents introduction international human rights instruments are treaties and other international documents relevant to international human rights law and the protection of human rights in general they can be classified into two categories declarations adopted by bodies such as the united nations general assembly which are not legally binding although they may be politically so as soft law and conventions which are legally binding instruments concluded under international law international treaties and even declarations can over time obtain the status of customary international law international human rights instruments can be divided further into global instruments to which any state in the world can be a party and regional instruments which are restricted to states in a particular region of the world in this lecture key international human rights documents that carry specific provisions for the protection and promotion of rights of the minorities are discussed broadly under the headings of international declarations and global conventions international declarations international declarations determine the standards for the protection of human rights including that of the minorities such as linguistic religious ethnic and racial minorities these are non binding instruments governments who care about their international image may consequently adopt their policies universal declaration of human rights un 1948 the universal declaration of human rights udh is a declaration adopted by the united nations general assembly on 10 december 1948 at paris the declaration represents the first global expression of rights to which all human beings are inherently entitled udhr along with international covenant on civil and political rights and the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights forms the international bills of human rights with regard to the rights of the minorities article 2 of the udhr stipulates that everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in the declaration without distinction of any kind such as race color sex language religion political or other opinion etc article 7 further affirms that all are equal before the law and are entitled to the protection of the law without discrimination article 16 clause 1 reaffirms the right to marry and to form a family without any limitation due to race nationality or religion article 18 is on the freedom of thought conscience and religion and states that this right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching practice worship and observance article 27 stipulates that everyone has a right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community and finally article 29 states that 
everyone has duties to the community in which alone the free and full development of his personality is possible. Declaration on the Right to Development, UN 1986. The right to development was first recognized in 1981 in the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The right to development was subsequently proclaimed by the United Nations in 1986 in the Declaration on the Right to Development which was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 41 Oblique 128. The right to development was reaffirmed by the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action, the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development and Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The preamble of the declaration states that development is a comprehensive economic, social, cultural and political process which aims at the constant improvement of the well-being of the entire population and of all individuals. Further, it assures to promote the, and encourage respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, color, sex, language, religion, etc. Article 6 urges all states to cooperate in order to promote, encourage and strengthen universal respect for and observance of all human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without any distinction as to race, sex, language or religion. Vienna Declaration and Program of Action, World Conference on Human Rights, 1993. The Vienna Declaration and Program of Action, BDPA, it's a human rights declaration adopted at the World Conference on Human Rights on 25th June, 1993 in Vienna, Austria. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights was created by this declaration endorsed by General Assembly Resolution 48 Oblique 121 of 20 December 1993. Its preamble endorses to develop and encourage respect for human rights, fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, sex, language or religion. Article 1, Para 19 reaffirms the obligations of the states to ensure that persons belonging to minorities may exercise fully and effectively all human rights and fundamental freedoms without any discrimination. Article 1, Para 30 condemns the gross and systematic human rights violations which include all forms of racism, racial discrimination and apartheid and other denials of economic, social and cultural rights, religious intolerance, etc. Article 1, Para 33 recognizes the important role played by education in the promotion and respect of human rights with regard to all individuals without distinction of any kind such as race, sex, language or religion. Article 2 B1 in general urges all governments to take immediate measures and to develop policies to prevent all forms and manifestations of racism or related intolerance as well as to take appropriate measures to counter intolerance and related violence based on religion or belief including the desecration of religious sites. 
Article 2 B2 exclusively deals with persons belonging to national or ethnic, religious and linguistic minorities, minority right declaration, and calls on the Commission on Human Rights, states and international community to promote and protect the rights of the persons belonging to national or ethnic, religious and linguistic minorities in accordance with the Minority Rights Declaration. Declaration of Human Duties and Responsibilities, UNESCO, 1998. The Declaration of Human Duties and Responsibilities, DHDR, was written for reinforcing the implementation of human rights under the auspices of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. It was proclaimed in 1998 to commemorate the 58th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in the city of Valencia. Therefore, it is also known as the Valencia Declaration. Chapter 8 of DHDR is solely devoted to protection of minorities and indigenous peoples. The aim of the chapter 8 is to emphasize the need for protection of minorities and indigenous peoples. Article 31 formulates the duty and responsibilities by the states to respect and protect the existence, identity, and the rights of national, ethnic, religious, and linguistic minorities. Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity, UNESCO, 2001. The Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity is a declaration adopted by the General Conference of UNESCO at its 31st session on 2nd November 2001. Article 1 titled Cultural Diversity, the Common Heritage of Humanity states that as a source of exchange, innovation and creativity, cultural diversity is as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for the nature. In this sense, it is the common heritage of humanity and should be recognized and affirmed for the benefit of present and future generations. Article 6 affirms the freedom of expression, media pluralism and multilingualism. Global Conventions International legal instruments take the form of a treaty, also called agreement, convention, or protocol, that binds the contracting states to the negotiated terms. When negotiations are completed, the text of a treaty is established as authentic and definitive and is signed by the representative of states. A state can agree to be bound to a treaty in various ways. The most common are ratification or accession. The treaty enters into force or becomes valid when a predetermined number of states have ratified or acceded to the treaty. The binding treaties can be used to force governments to respect the treaty provisions. International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, 1966. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR, is a multilateral treaty adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on 16 December 1966 and came into force from 23rd March 1976. It commits to its parties to respect the civil 
and political rights of individuals, including the right to life, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, electoral rights, rights to due process, and a fair trial. As of April 2014, the covenant has 74 signatories and 168 parties. ICCPR obliges states to guarantee the rights set forth in the covenant without distinction of any kind such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. Article 2. The treaty also requires governments to prohibit any national, racial or religious hatred that constitutes incitement to discrimination, hostility or violence. Article 20. ICCPR also stipulates that all persons are equal before the law and are entitled without any discrimination to the equal protection of the law. Article 26. The most widely accepted legally binding provision of minorities is Article 27 of the ICCPR, which states, in those states in which ethnic, religious, or linguistic minorities exist, persons belonging to such minorities shall not be denied the right in community with other members of their group to enjoy their own culture, to profess and practice their own religion, or to use their own language. International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, 1966. The International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, ICESCR, is a multilateral treaty adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on 16 December 1966. And in force from 3rd January 1976. It commits its parties to work toward the granting of economic, social and cultural rights to the non-self-governing and trust territories and individuals, including labor rights and the right to health, the right to education, the right to an adequate standard of living. As of 2014, the covenant had 162 parties. Article 2 emphasizes that the rights protected in this treaty shall be exercised without distinction of social status or race. This is a non-discrimination provision. Article 13 is a special right. Special rights are not privileges, but they are granted to make it possible for minorities to preserve their identity, characteristics, and traditions. Only when minorities are able to use their own languages, benefit from services they have themselves organized, as well as take part in the political and economic life of states, can they begin to achieve the status which majorities take for granted? Convention relating to the status of refugees, 1951, and protocol relating to the status of refugees, 1967. The convention relating to the status of refugees is a United Nations multilateral treaty that defines who is a refugee and sets out the rights of individuals who are granted asylum and the responsibilities of nations that grant asylum. 
Apart from expanding the definition of a refugee, the protocol obliges states to comply with the substantive provisions of the 1951 Convention to all persons covered by the refugee definition in Article 1 without any limitation of debt. The Refugee Convention gives individuals the right to seek asylum on the grounds of well-founded fear of persecution based on race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group. Under Article 3, states are required to implement these provisions without discrimination as to race, religion, or country of origin. International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, 1965. The International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, ICERT, is a United Nations Convention. The Convention commits its members to the elimination of racial discrimination and the promotion of understanding among all races. The Convention was adopted and opened for signature by the United Nations General Assembly on 21st December 1965 and entered into force on 4th January 1969. As of April 2013, it has 87 signatories and 177 parties. The Convention is monitored by the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, sir. This is the most comprehensive treaty concerning the rights of racial and ethnic minorities. The Convention follows the structure of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, International Convenient on Civil and Political Rights, and the International Convenient on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, with a preamble and 25 articles divided into three parts. Conclusion There are numerous other UN treaties and declarations aimed at combating the problem of discrimination against various racial, religious, social, ethnic groups, etc. For example, discrimination against women from racial, religious, and ethnic minorities may also constitute breaches of convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women 1979 convention on the rights of the child 1989 protects the rights of children from ethnic religious or linguistic minorities to enjoy their culture and to practice their religion and language other examples include the International Convention on the Separation and Punishment of the Crime of Apartheid, 1973, International Convention Against Apartheid in Sports, 1985, UNESCO has adopted the Convention Against Discrimination in Education, 1960, which protects the rights of minority groups to education and the Declaration on Race and Racial Prejudice, 1978, and the Declaration on Fundamental Principles concerning the contribution to the mass media to strengthening peace and international understanding, to the promotion of human rights, and to countering racialism, apartheid, and incitement to war, 1978. Finally, the only United Nations instrument which addresses the special rights of minorities in a separate UN document is the Declaration on the Rights of the Persons 
belonging to national or ethnic religious and linguistic minorities.